So did you hear that? The disciples and Jesus were going to Capernaum, and Jesus asked the disciples, what was that that you were arguing about along the way? And they didn't say anything because they were arguing about who was the greatest. And actually, just earlier in the, in the book of Mark, one chapter earlier, Jesus had told them basically the same thing. They said, Jesus, you are the Messiah. In chapter 8, Peter said that for the first time. Before that chapter, the only people that knew who Jesus was were the demons and the evil spirits. But then Peter says, you are the Messiah. And Jesus says, that's right. Don't tell anybody because the Messiah is going to suffer and is going to be arrested and is going to die on a cross. And they didn't understand. He said, if you're, going to, if, if you're going to follow me, you have to help others. You have to serve others. And they didn't get it. And it's like they've just heard that twice, and all of a sudden they're going for a walk. Oh, what, what were you guys talking about? Oh, you know, just arguing about which one of us was the greatest. It's kind of like we have this book that we read to our, um, to our kids called It's Mine, and it's a book about sharing. And I promise, it's like after I read that book to my kids, my four-year-old, the oldest, the four-year-old, he becomes like even more possessive of his toys. It's like, were you not, were you not listening to anything that I just said? And it happens throughout Scripture too, right? Genesis 2, God creates Adam and Eve and says, you can eat of the fruit on any tree in this whole garden, any tree except for that one. Genesis chapter 3, oh, I think the, fr tr the fruit on that tree looks pretty good. Let's try it. Then later in Mark, Jesus is going to say to, to, to Peter, before the cock crows three times, you're going to deny me. That's in Mark chapter 14. And it's like 18 verses later. Nope, I don't know this guy, Jesus. He says it three times and the cock crows. You know, in church, we have a word for this, a word for this, this tendency. It's called sin. And sermons about sin, of course, are why everybody comes to church. We love coming to church to hear sermons about sin. But today, the, the title that I gave for, uh, for my sermon today is uh, Everything We Need to Know We Learned in Kindergarten, right? And when I think about where we are right now, we are the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks, and we think about the way that our nation came together in the wake of those attacks, and fast forward 20 years, it's like everything is divisive. Everything is agenda-driven. There's nothing that we, can, that we can unify behind. And what better passage could there be than this one for a day like today, for an occasion like today? It's not rocket science, y'all. If we are going to be followers of Christ, don't look to ourselves. Don't look to asserting my rights and what I am supposed to be entitled to and you are uh, on my property or you are disrespecting me. Look to Jesus to show us the way of service to show us the way of sacrificial love. It's something that we teach every single day in kindergarten. It's something that we learned every single day in kindergarten. Again, it's not something that, that should be revolutionary. Sharing, looking to children. I think there's a reason why Jesus grabbed a child and said to them, if you want to be my follower, you have to welcome children. 
Whoever wants to be first should be last. My followers should be the servants, the helpers, the people who look to put others before themselves. We are going through this renovation right now at uh, Westminster, and after worship, the south wing of the building is going to be open. It's not done yet, but we're going to offer a sneak peek for everybody to, to see what we have been up to. And I'm reminded of, there was, a, there was a delivery man that was coming last week, and I think he was delivering uh, changing tables for our new family restrooms. And especially during the week when preschool is, is going on, and we have other church events, and the construction crews are in the building, this guy had come and he knew he needed to deliver this package somewhere. And it was like, where is this package supposed to go? And the staff was all trying to figure it out. There were volunteers trying to point him where to go. And, and finally, he, he got to me and he said, I think they're changing tables. And I said, come with me. Let's go to the fellowship hall. And he is drenched in sweat. And he just said to me, I know you guys are doing something special at this church. I can see that you've got a lot going on. And let me just say, everybody I have interacted with today has been so kind, has been so nice, has been so helpful. The job that I do delivering for UPS or for FedEx, oh man, I am so used to putting up with people who are just mean and nasty. And everyone, even if the sound doesn't work or you can't quite <laughs> tell everybody where to go. Everybody has been so kind and it warmed my heart to hear him say that. And so as we go about our week for the rest of this week, I hope that we will take a page out of what we try to teach our children when we are on the highway, <laughs> when we are shopping, when we are listening to the loved one or the family member whose political beliefs we just don't agree with. And we will remember what Jesus taught about being kind, about putting others' needs before our own. Um, and I hope that we can be that, that spark um, that will catch the rest of the world on fire for the love of God and for the love of Christ and for a spirit um, of, of belonging and of unity. Will you uh, please pray with me? Holy and loving God, we give you thanks for sending us Jesus to teach us and remind us of the things that we should already know. As we go about our weeks this week, help us to be patient, help us to be full of grace, Help us to remember that we are so deeply loved and fully approved of by you that we can give our lives sacrificially as helpers and servants for others. Amen.